Stinchcomb of the SEC Network, former Georgia Bulldog, All-America, and now with the All-State Good Works team again, continuing to serve with that. We appreciate you being with us, Matt, here at SEC Media Days. How you been? I've been great. We've had a lot of good times already. I mean, this is – we haven't even started this thing, really. And uh, you can already feel the energy amping up in here. All right. Another SEC champion since we last talked, and it's the Auburn Tigers – what are your thoughts going into this season? A little bit about Auburn since that's close to home here for us. And will it be another Southeastern Conference national champion? Uh, well, you know, I think there's a real good shot of the conference producing another national champion. I don't know that it's going to come out of anywhere near Opelika this year. Uh, but doggone it, I mean, you've, it's still pretty new, the one that y'all just got over there. So it's uh, – uh, I think there's a decent shot that the, uh, the, the school that's in another town there in y'all state's confines – uh, might have a real good shot at it. You look at their schedule and it lays out pretty nicely. But, you know, you look at Auburn and uh, it's not as if they don't have anything coming back, but they don't have much. I mean, you look at, what, seven or eight starters returning. Your offensive line is pretty much gone except for one starter. you got to replace the maybe one of the most uh, prolific college football players, at least from a single-season standpoint, as we've ever seen. Um, and one heck of a run that uh, included a bunch of tightrope walking. Um, it's going to be tough to duplicate that when you look at some of the attrition at the positions and the fact that, doggone it, man, Mississippi State, you had to hang on to win. You got to win in overtime versus Clemson. There were some close shaves even early on in the season. It went on throughout the year um, and still found a way to win. That's hard to do back-to-back -back seasons, especially with, with some of the turnover. But that being said, uh, I don't think many people thought going into the season last year, they may, have, they may have speculated and thought there was a small chance, but nobody favored Auburn to do what they did last year, so it's hard to completely count them out. They could win nine games. You never know. Schedule is incredibly tough. Is that the biggest challenge? You, you mentioned all those other things, but looking at that schedule, maybe the toughest of any team in the SEC. Yeah, you know, to me, this time of year, all you, you got two things to go by. is The team you got this year going into the season, which inevitably that's the last time that team's going to look like that from a roster standpoint. People get injured, guys get declared ineligible, positions change, et cetera. Um, but you also look at the schedule. You know, those are really the only two uh, known commodities going into the year. You don't know how your team's going to gel versus live bullets until you actually start playing the games, and we don't have that luxury right now. We're, what, six weeks out from playing a game still. Um, so we don't know. Uh, but when you look at Auburn's schedule, you know, the eight home games, you got seven this year. You swap Florida for Kentucky, uh, I think that makes it tougher. I think all in all, it's a tougher slate of games. Um, there are fewer, fewer games at home, obviously. And the roster is just different. And you look at defensively, it might be even more daunting uh, than the changes on offense. You, know, you lose Adams and Zachary on the outside, obviously. You lose your quarterback and your offensive line. That's bad. But you lose Antoine Carter on the defensive side of the ball. Nick Fairley, Josh Bynes, three out of your four defensive backs, your kick returner. It's hard to just reload after all that sort of thing. And so who knows, this will be a, 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 a tall task uh, for the coaching staff, but they handled last year's adversity so well uh, that you still think that you can still have high expectations of an eight or nine win year. Talked about Alabama a little bit, just mentioning them. Is, is Alabama the favorite coming in this season, you think? I think that's pretty much the consensus. And, and, you know, to me, I think you look at their team, and regardless of schedule, you might still have them as, as your favorite. But what only strengthens that position is when you look at their non-conference schedule and the way things work out and their Eastern Division foes don't include Georgia, don't include South Carolina. Uh, I don't believe Florida's on the schedule for them either. You look at they have to go to Penn State. Other than that, it's a pretty nice layout for the Crimson Tide. None of this you get a buy before you play us business like they had to deal with last year. And the fact that LSU, who's probably the other favorite, has to play Oregon to open and then three or four weeks later plays West Virginia, uh, those are not two cupcakes for a non-conference slate. The way it lays out, it's all right there in front of the Crimson Tide. And I'm saying that knowing they lost their left tackle, their Heisman Trophy winning tailback, their quarterback, and Julio Jones. But uh, the defense is strong. I think they're going to find a way to plug and play with Trent Richardson and whoever ends up taking the snaps. 
Matt, you, you, you hit some of your favorites there on the, in the Western Division. Talk about that Eastern Division right now. Is it wide open, or who's your favorite there? It's, it's wide open, all right. And the, the problem is everybody's just kind of flopping around on the deck. And I don't know necessarily you know, who your horse is going to be. You look at South Carolina, and you think, uh, you know, here's a team that wins the division. They've got a ton of talent, but a year ago they were still capable of dropping and stubbing their toe against Kentucky. You know, you lose to an FSU team that proved to be pretty good, but they end up with five losses regardless. And obviously you got to play an SEC championship game to get there, so it's somewhat dubious to point that out. A tremendous season for the Gamecocks. So I think they, they can be and maybe should be your favorite going in. You've got Steven Garcia. He's the top passer returning at the quarterback position. Marcus Lattimore's 240 pounds is scary for somebody. They've got probably the best front four maybe in college football. They're going to be able to pressure the quarterback. The linebacker position is going to be better. They've got the pieces. With Alshon Jeffrey on the outside, offensively, they should have plenty of flexibility with that run game. Uh, I don't know why week two of the season versus Georgia shouldn't determine who the Eastern Division champion will ultimately be. I think Florida uh, has, a, has a real chance of being in a, a very real transition period. Um, of course, we said that when Urban Meyer was there and it lasted one season before he won a national championship. So um, it's just hard to gauge. But really, the Western, the Western Division, I think, again, this year should probably dominate the Eastern Division. And we'll find out in that championship game in the Dome. Sounds like you got Alabama, South Carolina in the SEC title game. You did say something about Georgia in the East, and that is your former team. Is this is this the year that Mark Rick's got to really see his program turn back around to where he was early in his days in Athens, or is it Sinar for him? I don't know about the Sinar part. You never know. This has been a discussion for two or three seasons now. It seems like about Coach Rick. Um, you know, that's a decision I think, obviously we all know, that will be made within the Athletic Association and the Athletic Department. Um, but I think this is probably the most important as far as, um, you know, job tenure is concerned for Mark Richt. I don't know that anybody would argue that. But the idea that everybody's talking about hot seat and how many degrees are we talking about here, and it's, it's kind of nutty because, I mean, y'all are in it, you're in the heart of SEC country. The hot seats are everywhere. Everybody's seat's hot. It doesn't matter how many. You could have just won a national championship. Ask Les Miles about a hot seat. I mean, here's a guy that's uh, won conference championships, played for others, won a national championship, and it seems like half the fan base is for him and half of them hate him. He's got one foot out the door and one foot, you know, in the, in the College Football Hall of Fame. So um, it's, uh, this conference has a way of creating turnover, whether it should exist or not. But it's a big year. It's a big year for Georgia. And the second week of the season, as big as the Boise State game is, as far as the national conversation, uh, from a national title standpoint, whether Boise should be a contender, uh, that's big for them. It's bigger for them, I think, than it is for Georgia. The big game for Georgia will be any of those Eastern Division opponents. Matt, dude, let's talk a little bit about, you know, Slive's going to be on here in a little bit. Abbott says you got to go here. You got to go listen to Commissioner Slive here in a little bit. You know, there's a lot going on. People speculating this, speculating that, that he might be stepping down, might be doing this. You know, nobody knows yet. I guess we'll all be there and, 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 and hear it. But w with that said, I guess uh, some of the things that have been going on with Slive and a lot of the commissioners, too, is a lot of the NCAA and the probation that's going on. LSU just hit yesterday with the probation. Is What do you see is, I mean, is, I mean, you keep hearing all these stories about Oregon, Ohio State, I mean, and, and even you know some guys talking about that there's going to be an even bigger story coming a, b a bigger bomb coming if you think these are big where do you think college football is headed with all these these big stories and the light and the probation and the, the ncaa now it's heading the wrong direction in my opinion i you know and what's concerning to me more than anything else is that uh it's almost like a toothless tiger here where uh, if these if these acts are being committed and they're considered major then the punishment needs to fit the description. And to me, either there's too many rules, uh, there's too many arcane rules, these, these, these rules that are dealing on the fringes of what would be considered bad action, uh, and yet somehow there aren't rules that would address, I think, the instances that are egregious. Uh, and even in those instances, uh, it's as if the punishment isn't enough to deter future acts. So um, I think until enforcement um, has some more intensity and has a, a, some more impact on these respective programs, then I don't know what's going to keep, keep uh, the folks that are going to participate in some of them uh, from continuing to do so. LSU.